Good morning, Jacob from Go Industrial. Hope you guys are going well. Today we're at a beautiful property in Morningside and we'll be running you through spraying stain on a fence to get you guys a bit of an idea as to how quick airless is and how easy it is to get it all set up. So we're working with all water-based paints here which makes life a lot easier. All of our cleanup, all of our thinning is purely with water. Um, it's just really, really awesome for domestic use. So we're spraying a stain because it is such a low viscosity material. What we want to use is 100 mesh filters in both our gun and our manifold filter as well. So all it means is that our mesh type is really fine and it's going to block out any little particles that are at the bottom of the paint tin if it hasn't been properly mixed or strained. We've got those two points of filtration to make sure that our equipment's not getting damaged and your tips aren't going to block or you're not going to have any troubles when you're actually spraying. So we'll run you through the machine, we'll get it all started. At the moment, as I said, we generally run with a 60 mesh filter for all of our water-based primers, top coats, acrylics, and we're going to be swapping to 100 mesh manifold filter there. If your sprayer is of the Magnum series or you don't have a manifold filter, no need to stress, you actually have a pump filter that's built in, you don't have to take it out. All you have to do is run a 100 mesh gun filter and at least you've got one step of that filtration. What product are we using for the stain, Jacob? We are using Cabins Aquadec, which is a water-based stain. And this is of a natural finish. So we're trying to get as close to the treated pine fence, which is, it's fairly new as possible, which is good. Always read the application instructions of your paint supplier. There'll be a really thorough explanation of what you have to do in preparation to paint the fence. If it's a new construction, especially with treated pine, you have to leave it and let it weather in. Um, otherwise it's, it's advised to use some sort of sealer or a stain blocker as soon as it's built. So always follow the instructions of the application guide and the materials you're using. That includes any top coats, acrylics, enamels. It's always a really, really thorough guide, especially when spraying airless, often on the technical data sheet. If you go on to the supplier's website, you'll be able to see exactly a guide of what pressure is recommended, what tip sizes are recommended, and that way it gives you a good start. Um, now often they are just a general assumption of, hey, this will work. If you need specific job advice or project advice, you can always hit us up on Instagram or go on the website and get in touch with our team. We're just flushing out any material from previous jobs. So in here, we're just gonna clear that all out of the hose. It's always good to run water first. Water will find any leak points in a system. So where you've got your gun connection, where you've got your hose hooked up before running product and getting straight into it and being a bit hasty, it's always good to run water first as a test just to make sure you don't have any blowouts on a new substrate that you're painting. You don't want to ruin someone's wall or someone's house. So I have some pump armor in the system, which is like a storage solution. So I'm going to pump that out first prior to pumping through the stain. So one step that we often do, depending on what tip size you're using, so standard with most machines, depending if you've purchased a Magnum DIY unit or you've entered into the professional airless series, they'll come with a different range of tips and guards. So all a guard is, and it looks a bit funny, and that's due to not wanting to put your hand in front of it, it's a safety measure, because these airless sprays do spray up to 3,000, 3,300 PSI. They are dangerous. If by any means, when you're spraying paint, if you somehow inject yourself with paint, go straight to the hospital, it is a serious matter and as soon as you get paint into your bloodstream it's it's not happy days so make sure that you always follow the safety instructions you relieve pressure in the system uh, where you can when you're cleaning up and there are measures like gun triggers as well with safeties so you're not going to accidentally tap that trigger while you're changing a tip in a guard so be very mindful of that when you're setting up a machine so with a safety or a tip guard we have a one seal in the back which is what Graco call it basically it's a rubber seal and a gasket so when you're actually screwing the guard up against the gun, it seals the tip in, so you can reverse it, you can clean it out, you can spray again. And all it means is that you're getting a really tight seal and you're getting no leakage from around these points here. So what I'm doing is, because our green fine finish low pressure tips, which we love and we recommend for any of our smaller pumps, they only require half the working pressure to atomize paint. They give you a really fine finish, far less drift, far less um, overspray and the atomization is amazing. So today we're using a 308, and just to quickly cover that, the tip sizes, 308 mean, take your first number, double it, that's your fan width in inches. So this will be a six inch fan, which is good for the fence that we're gonna be painting. And this is an eight thou tip, 
which is the size of the orifice where the paint is actually atomized through and that's in thousandths of an inch. But there is a nice little guide that we'll link on this video which shows what tip is best for what application. So for a stain, because it's very thin, we're gonna be using an eighth hour. But when we switch over to primer and our top coat acrylic layer, we'll be using a 14 and a 12 thou tip, which is a lot bigger because the paint is a lot more viscous and we need that bigger size to actually push the pressure through and atomize the paint effectively. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna poke through this one seal and this is an older one seal that we had in the guard from a previous job. And I always wanna make sure that my equipment is very clean so I don't get any spitting. If you do get dried paint around this one seal, like you can see here, can be a primary contender for spitting. We never want spitting when we're spraying because it is a seamless finish. So to put that new one seal in, I've got the little one seal there. You can actually use the bottom of your tip. It's got like a little, little groove here that'll take that one seal. Well, I've had too much coffee, so I can't do things without shaking. Do I need to change the one seal if I'm using a blue tip or a green tip? Yes, so your blue tips, your LTX tips work at a higher pressure and they'll actually have a bigger one seal on the back. So you'll actually see this little hole here will be a lot larger because we're using a fine finish low pressure tip, which are green, as well as low pressure tips, which are another type of tip. They are also green. Have to use the one seal that comes with the tip packet. For every new tip, you will get a spare one seal. Keep them handy. They are very handy to have, and I would recommend changing them out when you switch over to a new tip, just to ensure that everything's nice, new and clean and ready to go. So we've got that in there, and like I said, when you're screwing onto the 7 8 thread, what happens is, when we eventually screw this little guy on, it's gonna compress that one seal, and that's when you're actually getting that seal there. So when I go to reverse my tip, locks in nicely. If your tip is very loose, that means that your one seal could be worn, or you're actually missing the one seal altogether. When you go to spray, it's gonna leak straight out of this section here. Very frustrating, so always make sure to check, is my one seal on the back of my guard? Yes, is it clean? Yes. Is it nice and secure against the gun? Yes, is my gun safety on? We're good to go. So depending on which airless sprayer series you're using throughout the Graco range, the concept is the same. They have a flexible or a fixed suction tube, and all that does is it goes into the paint or it goes into clean water. Whatever you're using to flush through the system is what this main suction hose will end up going into. What happens is, when I'm about to turn this machine on, it's gonna use atmospheric pressure to push the paint through and into our piston pump. It's the exact same with our Magnum series. The pump sizes are just a bit smaller because they're not designed for nearly as much output as what some of these professional units are. What's gonna happen, it's gonna go through the piston pump. It's gonna go through a feeder hose into our manifold. And depending on where your spray switch is set, downwards is always in a prime position. So what's gonna happen, it's gonna go through the suction hose and out through this drain tube. And there's no, gonna be no flow actually through the paint hose itself. We initially need to prime the pump to get paint working inside of that system. We never want to run a pump dry. And when you then flick it into the spray, we actually have enough fluid to push through the gun. So we always jog that at a very low pressure because it doesn't need to work hard. It's just using the atmospheric pressure to push that product through. So you'll see here, I've got a waste pail. It's always good to have a clean bucket of water and a waste pail. And I'm just going to wait until we get some stain going through there. Now, I turn the pressure right down once I have stain coming out my drain tube. I know that the pump is primed and I've got enough product running through. You'll have these clips against your main suction hose. What I'm going to do here, and this is an important step, if the machine for whatever reason overpressurizes, it's going to relieve pressure out the drain tube. So we want to make sure that this is always fixed to our main suction hose in case of that event. You don't want your drain tube flicking everywhere. If you're inside, if you're painting a room, that could potentially flick under pressure, get paint on your walls and ceiling, which is never a fun situation. So now that we've primed the machine, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put my gun safety on. I'm going to remove my tip and my guard because we wanna get paint flowing through the lines first. So this currently has our storage solution in the lines and I'm gonna flush that out until I'm getting straight stain. And then I can reattach my guard and my tip. I'll be ready to spray just a few tests and we'll go from there. And at a very low pressure, to speed that up, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it in the spray. And I'm just gonna angle it there just to make sure. So this is all water that was in the lines prior. now 
now straight stay in. So what I'm gonna do immediately is put my gun safety on. I'm in spray position right now. The machine is under pressure. So what I'm gonna do, so I'm just gonna clean up around that section. I'm gonna attach my tip in my guard again. Did you have a question, AJ? Yeah, I was just wondering what gun you were using today. Oh, this is a contractor compact PC. So it's one of our newest guns from Graco. It's 50% lighter than some of our other units. And it also has a lighter trigger pull. This is designed for finer finishing. So if you're doing cabinetry work, if you're in and out of tight spaces, it is very compact. If you look here at the size of my palm, it's a nice little two finger gun. So this is an extra. We can swap these guns out of any unit, even our Magnum series. Generally, they come with different hand pieces. Most of our DIY units, it's in the same fashion, will come with a four finger trigger gun. So this is called an FTX or an SG3 gun. Works in the exact same fashion, just the trigger is a little bit heavier and you've got a longer filter in there and you can see the difference in the length. This is a personal favorite of mine for fine finishing. And since I'll be in and out behind trees and within the garden, it's just nice to carry around. So what I'll do here, it's because I'm spraying stain, I'm gonna work at about maybe 1200 PSI to start as a guide. And it's always, always worth testing first. Wherever you're spraying, if you still have lines in your spray pattern, that's when you know you're too low of a pressure or the paint product is actually too thick. Your tip may be too small. Generally, if you've got all the formula right and you're still getting tails, up your pressure just slightly. And above that, we're getting a perfect spray gradient. That's when you know you're at the right pressure. So because this is a stain, I'm gonna be going fairly slowly and doing a nice thick coat first to get a good film build. This is a 308 tip, so it's one of our smallest orifice sizes. When I'm actually running my spray pattern, see there how you've got a perfect gradient. There's absolutely no lines in that spray pattern. That's just straight stain. So that's, that's pretty much perfect. We're not getting any spitting and we'll be ready now to set up and hit the fence. Now on this first coat, I'm just gonna be covering the majority of the fence. On the second coat, I'll actually get in between these laps at an angle, but I'm just being very mindful of not loading on too much product at this stage because definitely don't wanna get any runs in the stain. And because this is a very low pressure tip, our machine's working at a very low pressure. So that piston's not jogging every couple of seconds. It's really efficient for the product itself. Right now I'm about 30 centimeters away from the fence, which is just whereabouts you want to be. Any further away, you'll lose too much product and atomization. Any closer, you risk getting runs, which we don't want. What tip are you using again, Jacob? So this is a 308, so it's a six inch fan, as you can see. And it's a very small orifice, so Stain is a very low viscosity, so it's very thin, like almost like a watery substance. If I was here painting with a top coat, or like say like an exterior acrylic, like a Dulux Weather Shield or a Solar Guard, the volume percentage of solids there is about 46, 48 percent. It's quite thick. Right now, 308 tip, I'd just be tailing, so the spray pattern would be very poor. I wouldn't be getting any product dispersion actually on the surface itself and it'd be like a mist coat so spraying this stain here right now on the first coat you're getting roughly four or five times the coverage of brushing so right now I'd have to brush four coats to get the equivalent of what I'm spraying right now which is so I'm gonna hit it at a slight angle as I'm coming down and then on the second coat I'm going to change my spray angle, so I'll hit it from the opposite direction, just to make sure that all these lapped timber slats are getting, or the beams, sorry, are getting good coverage. When we're spraying like AJ is doing right now, we've got a continuous motion. We're always releasing above where the substrate ends and below again. 50% overlap each time when spraying. And you'll always get a seamless finish. So we never want to end our spray pattern in the middle of the fence here because you'll get some heavily lines to show where you've triggered on again. 
we're keeping our wrist locked and staying parallel to the surface to ensure that there's not an uneven coat. Stain is a bit more forgiving. But that's perfect technique right now. We've got the low pressure tip, so we're not blasting it on. We're moving at a solid pace because it is purely pressure driven. There's no air in the line, so it's all product. There we go, just like that. So running a 410 fine finish low pressure tip right now. It's because we wanted to get a bit thicker of a film builder to stain on. As our good friend decided that first coat is going to be the nicest natural tone that he wants to go for. He doesn't want to go any darker. So I've up the orifice size by two thou just to get a nice thicker film build. So this fence is going to get some good protection. Probably what it is, recoating. Well, this right now would be the equivalent of about four or five coats of brushing. So either way, saving time, no brush strokes on the timber at all. That's going to soak right into this as well. I'm just overlapping 50% right now with my fan width, which is an eight inch fan. And these are low pressure tips. So I'm sitting at about 1000 PSI on my 395. Doesn't matter what spray you're using, if it's all very similar flow rate for the pump, you'll be able to run low pressure. We'll just check there, make sure you've got good coverage. I'm running out of hose length indeed right now, but we'll do as much as we can before we have to move that machine. So we've got about 22 meters of hose right here. So we've got 15 meters standard that comes with the kit. And then I've got a seven and a half meter hose that I generally use for interior. 